It's a pleasure to be here. Even saving one Jewish child, the entire organization is worth it. Kalba Khomer, the hundreds and thousands that you're saving. Hashem should give you the strength to continue all of your Avodat HaKodesh. Amen. Tonight's topic was called How to Achieve Emunah. It's a very large topic to cover in a short amount of time. How to achieve emunah. There's different types of emunah. There's emunah called Yeshuat Hashem Keheref Ayin. There's the emunah that I could be saved any second and I know Hashem could come through for me and I know I can get a Rifuah Shalema and I know I can get a Shiduch. That's one type of emunah. That type of emunah is very important. Kivui, hope. Hope to Hashem. Kavel Hashem. This is what's going to produce the Mashiach. It said if the Jewish people had the only merit they had was kivui, that would be enough. Just the yearning, the hope for Hashem's salvation. There is a question everyone's going to be asked after 120 called Sipital Yeshua. Did you anticipate the salvation? Simply it means, did you anticipate Mashiach? The Bet HaLevi says it means something else as well. Did you anticipate Hashem saving you in your current situation? Were you hopeful or were you down? Were you saying, I'm finished, it's not fair, I'm never going to get happy, never going to happen. Or were you upbeat or were you hopeful? Sibital the Yeshua. Did you anticipate Hashem's salvation in your own life? For that type of emunah, how do you acquire that type of emunah? For that type of emunah, you need to learn about Hashem. You need to hear stories of how Hashem saved others. Of how other people in the predicament you were in, were also in. Someone called me last week. Their husband's in the hospital. He needs a pair of lungs very quickly. And I told this woman, I told her, first of all, you should have kavana in the words in the Yotzer or Bore Refuot, that Hashem could create a Refuah. But I told her, I had someone a few years ago with the exact same situation as you. And three days before the doctors were going to say it's over, a pair of lungs came. I said, she said, you don't know what that just did for me. I got so much hope because you heard someone else who would happen to to hear stories about how Hashem could save when there seems to be no way out. I will just tell you one well-known story that surfaced many years ago because this is not going to be my topic for tonight. There was once a boy from Yerushalayim and this boy was diagnosed with liver failure. He needed a liver transplant to survive and the doctors in Israel told his parents to take him to Brussels, Belgium, the world center of liver transplants. The parents contacted the center. The center said, no problem, but your son is going to be at the end of a very long list. And the boy didn't have that much time yet. For each person to get a liver, by the time they got to that boy, the odds were practically zero. So the boy went to see his rabbi and he said, Rabbi, it looks like it's impossible. Could I just stay here with my family in Yerushalayim and at least enjoy the last days of my life with my family rather than sitting in, a, in Belgium when I don't know anybody? And the rabbi told him, what are you talking about? Never give up. Hashem could do anything. You do yours, he does his. You have to go. And he gave the boy chizuk. 
The boy, okay, okay. And the boy went. And he went with what seemed to be impossible odds. And he waited by. He got, the doctors there told him that if a liver ever comes about, it has to be transferred immediately. You're better off staying somewhere near the hospital. And who knows, hopefully it'll happen. On April 14th, 2010, a volcano erupted in Iceland, propelling massive billows of hot ash and smoke across most of Europe. The, most of the continent became a no-fly zone because you couldn't see, the planes couldn't see. The very next day, a patient in Brussels passes away and his liver is available for transplant. They start calling the patients on the list and every single patient needed to fly to get to Brussels to make that transplant. They finally got to the last person on the list, this boy who was down the block and his life was saved. Nothing is beyond Hashem and therefore we are obligated, it's not just a nice thing, Kavel Hashem. The way you learn about this, like I told you, is to hear stories other people who went through what you're going through. I'm not going to discuss this tonight, but I will suggest we send out on a daily basis stories, if you would like to sign up, you could go to livingemunahwithanh.com and register, or you could send a request to livingemunah123 at gmail.com and you could hear daily chizuk on these types of stories. What I want to focus on tonight is a different type of emunah. How to acquire the emunah that everything that happens in our lives on a second to second basis is orchestrated by Hashem and how every single thing that happens to us couldn't be better than it is. The Gemara tells us, En adam no kef etzba'o melemata, elaim ken machrizin ala melemala. A person doesn't even stub his toe unless it was first decreed by Hashem in heaven. You know what that means? That means if you were ever walking and you bumped your toe into something, you know what had to take place Excuse me, for that to happen? In Shamayim, there was a Bedin sitting. Some angels were saying, she should stub her toe. Others were saying, no, she shouldn't. And Hashem is deciding, yes, no. Hashem says, it's beneficial, she needs it. <coughs> Excuse me. And then she stubs her toe. That's what happens. You don't just trip on something. Does it just happened to be a rock there that I fell on and I scratched my elbow. It's machrizin ala melemala. Everything that happens is machrizin ala melemala. To understand that our physical lives are totally beyond Hashem will remove so much stress, so much worry, so much heartache what people worry about and they can't sleep at night and they they think they have more control than they do they think that Paranasa is really all on their shoulders and they don't know how they're gonna live and they, and all of that is unnecessary worthless worry that does nothing our physical lives are entirely Biyad Hashem. We go through the motions, we make a hishtadlut, to camouflage Hashem, but we really have no say. Our real purpose in this world is to take the circumstances that Hashem put you in and choose correctly and be the best you can be in that situation and, and rise to the challenges and bekayem the 613 mitzvot and get close to Hashem in the place where He put you. 
And there is no better way to elevate yourself in this world than to acquire this midah of emunah. A person can become, you know, we find people who become great in many different areas. We have Gedole Torah, people who write Sefarim, they disseminate Torah to the masses, they help thousands, tens of thousands of people with their deep thought and advice. Some people, they're very wealthy, they give millions of dollars to Siddhaqah. Other people, they're heavily involved in Chesed. Everyone becomes great in different areas. But there's something, most of the areas require a certain talent. Hashem bless someone with money, bless them with wisdom. What is the regular Jew? How does the regular Jew become great in this world? I would like to read for you a piece of Chafetz Chaim in his Sefer Mahane Yisrael. Od Sari Adan Leda. A person needs to know Sheikar Hatova Hashelema Haatida Bimeha Geula. The main good, the complete good that is going to be given out in the days of Mashiach. Yihyeh Magia Lechol Echad is going to be given out to each person according to what? How much Torah they know? How much Shedakah they gave? Listen to his words. Kefi Geder Haemuna Vehit Hazekut Shehayalo Behakadosh Baruchu Behet Hagalut. According to how much Emuna you had. In these days when Hashem is hidden, Shi'im Rafa Yadok, you become weak. Az Chas Pechalila, heaven forbid, mit bazbez al yedeze shulchano le'ati lavo. The person's table will be lacking. Vim ha'ita monato shelema b'Hashem. But if your emunah is complete, lehit bonen tamid bechol ha'enyanim. To think, Always, with whatever happens to you, She'eru lo, She'bevadai oseh HaKadosh Baruch Hu, For sure Hashem did it, and it was litova. If you could be that person who attributes every last thing in your life, it was Hashem, it was good. It was Hashem, it was good. Listen to his words. Yitromem avur ze madregato. Your level will be so high, me'od, me'od, very much, le'atid lavo, v'yeh sholchano shalem ikol tuv. And your table will be complete with all that is good. This, says the Chafetz Chaim, is the key to everything. Recognizing every moment of your life is hashkahat Hashem. What do I mean you can become a gadol in emunah? You can become great. There's a yalkut in Iyov. Amar bi hanina bar papa. Iyov. Ilule lo karataga. If Iyov didn't complain, kishabau alav yesurin, when Hashem gave him yesurin. Kishem she omrim achshav, the same way we say today. In the Amidah, Elokei Abraham, Elokei Yitzhak, Velokei Yaakov, we would have been saying Velokei Iyov. Now I want to, I want to analyze this for a second. Abraham, Yitzhak, Yaakov, and Moshe Rabbeinu writes the Rambam were the four greatest individuals who ever lived. Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. You mean to tell me you're going to take Iov? Who is Iov? Nice person. Had a great life and then he lost everything. He had a lot of suffering. If he would have attributed every moment and say, Hashem, you know what you're doing, I accept. He would have been in the same level as Abraham, Yitzhak and Yaakov. 
This is mind-boggling. You look how great, look how far Emona could lift a person. You could go to the greatest of all time with understanding. David HaMelech. David HaMelech used to wake up at midnight. He slept, in the Gemara says, 60 horse, breath, horse breaths. He was up praising Hashem the whole night. But what caused David HaMelech to become the fourth leg of Hashem's chariot? When he was being ridiculed by another man, Shem'i ben Gera. And he said, leave him alone. It's not him, it's Hashem. He recognized when a person's yelling at him, it's Hashem. And then he got lifted up much higher. This is what Emunah could do for us. Emunah could make you great. If your purpose in this world is Avodat Hashem, if your purpose in this world is gaining Olam Abba, and the Chafetz Chaim is telling us, this is the way, then the first way that you are going to achieve Emunah is recognizing how important it is. Because when someone knows how important, some, I got to do it. Look how important this is. I didn't realize. I didn't know how important this is. The first step, recognize this is of chief importance. Emuna in Hashem, especially in our days, like the Prophet Chabakuk said about the end of days, Sadiq be'emunato yechyeh. To be a Sadiq in today's times, you need to have emuna. So number one, to know what Emunah is going to do for you. Emunah is going to relieve my stress. Emunah is going to connect me to Hashem. And Emunah is going to make me great. Now if I were to ask you, what do you think is better? Having Hashem perform open miracles for us, like Kiryat Yamsuf. Imagine living in the time where you see Hashem openly. Is it better for Hashem to perform open miracles for us? Or is it better for Hashem to lead us from behind the Teva? What is better? So, if you ask me, I would say, open miracles. What's your question? See Hashem? Open miracles? You know how many people are questioning? Where's Hashem? Where's Hashem? I don't see Him anymore. I do this. This doesn't happen. I go to, I go to pray. I don't make money. I do this. Where's Hashem? Where's I? Imagine you could see Hashem openly. Listen to this Gemara. The Gemara says, Esther is Sof Kol Hanisim. Esther was the end of the time period of miracles. Ma Ayelet HaShachar Sof Halayla. Just like the first rays of dawn are the end of night, so too Esther is the end of the miracle time period. Now you scratch your head and you say, Esther is the end of the miracle. That means there was 900 years of open miracles. Makot, Kiryat Yamsuf, you name it. Then Esther is the end of that time period. And you know what we call her? The first rays of dawn. That means that the miracle life is called nighttime. And then... The Teva is called daytime. And the Yarot Tevash Es, shouldn't it be opposite? Shouldn't we say Esther is the beginning of sunset? Not the beginning of dawn. And he explains. He said to be able to see Hashem 
in the derech hateva is much better than having to see him through open miracles. Open miracle time period is a period of darkness. Why? Because you need Hashem to open the sky and say, Hi, here I am, look, I'm here. Miracles are like a candle. A glimpse, wow, Hashem is here. You need candles when it's dark. But if you are able to recognize Hashem in the Teva, if you are able to pick up a cup of coffee and appreciate Hashem in every grain of coffee and say, I know it's you, you're ready in the light. You don't need a torch. You're living in the light. Hashem prefers that we see Him through nature. And the story of Esther taught us that. Where you could have two people, Big Tan and Teresh, talking and Mordechai happens to be there at that moment and he hears him and this and that in the chain of events. That is a lesson for us till Mashiach. That type of existence where you could see Hashem every moment. I don't need to wait for the open miracle. People say, it's not fair. I don't see Hashem openly. You know what that means? Hashem considers you worthy of being able to see Him without the open miracle. You can see me easy, easily. There's a story of a man, Masechet Shabbat. His wife passed away and they just had a newborn. Hashem made an open miracle and this man was nursing the child. A man nursing his own baby. So the Gemara says, wow. Kama gadol adam ze. This guy must be a major gadol for Hashem to do that for him. Hashem made him produce milk. He must be a great man. Abaye, Amar Abaye, Adaraba. Abaye says just the opposite. How bad is this guy? That he made God change nature for him. What does that mean? What's the argument? He's great, he's not great. For some reason, Hashem wanted this man to know he's going to take care of his child. Would have been better if Hashem gave him money, he hired a wet nurse, and he said, you're so kind, Hashem. You gave me the money. You found me the lady to do this. It's all you. But this man wasn't holding by that level. So you know what Hashem had to do? He had to change nature and give him milk. So he realizes, okay, you realize Hashem is taking care of you. That's not the way he wants it. He wants you to realize he's taking care of you when he gives you money to find someone to feed your baby. We tend, and I'm also at fault, we tend, when we train our children in emunah, when everything, anything, something bad happens to them, we tell the children, it's from Hashem, don't worry, He knows better for you. It was good for you, you don't know why, it's good for you. And we train our children. But you know what they think in their minds? Anytime something bad happens, oh, that's Hashem. He's always hurting me, but it's for the good. But what about when something good happens? Why don't you tell them when they got picked to be the star of the play? Wow, Hashem picked you. That was Hashem who picked you. How come when they got it, whatever they get, the first, Ma, look, I won first prize. Did you thank Hashem for... Hashem? What Hashem? Yeah, Hashem gave that to you. Instead of focusing on whenever something bad, it was Hashem. How about when something was good, that was Hashem. We have to get to the level where to us, the open miracle and the teva are one and the same. 
Let me give you two scenarios. You have a man, he's out of a job. Friday morning he wakes up, he has no money. He needs food for Shabbat. His wife tells him, honey, I have nothing in the kitchen, nothing in the refrigerator. We have eight children to feed. Could you give me money? He says, I don't have any money, I'm sorry. What are we going to do? Her husband goes, he starts crying, Hashem, I tried my hardest to get a job. I can't get a job. Please support my family. I need help. He's crying. Five minutes later, the, the bell rings. Someone's at the door. Who is it? We have a delivery for, me, for you. A generous person donated money to a lot of families. Here's yours. He opens up the envelope, a thousand dollars cash. Hashem, you're so kind. You know what they're going to do that Friday night in that house? They're going to sing the praises of Hashem. You're great, Hashem. You're great. Wow. Scenario number two. There's a man who is crying, please Hashem, I need a job. Hashem got him a job. He gets a paycheck now. Every Friday, he comes home with a paycheck. Friday morning, he goes to work, gets $1,000. He gives it to his wife, she buys food. Let me ask you a question. On that Friday night, are they saying, Hashem is so kind. He gave me a job. He gave me money. He gave... I don't know. I don't know if that family is singing the same praises. Why not? Because Hashem disguised himself in the Teva and he gave you a job with a paycheck? Does he deserve any less Hakarat HaTov? But we didn't, we didn't see Hashem in the Teva. We weren't holding. I don't know. I got a job. Just happened. Jobs pay money and that's it. No. See Hashem in the Teva. Recognize everything is from Hashem. We need to understand Hashem a little more because, yes, I can give you a class now for hours on the good that Hashem does for us. I'm going to give you one message. Anything you get in your life, say thank you Hashem, I know it's from you. But people don't come to me with problems when they have too much good. They come to me when they're missing, when they're lacking. They need more chizuk in that area. I prayed a hundred times, I wasn't answered. Where's Hashem? It's not fair. Man came over to his rabbi. He said, Rabbi, our family Baruch Hashem grew. We need a new place to live. I have eight children in three rooms in a house of three rooms total. And I'm crying my eyes out every day. Hashem, please give me a house. Let me find something cheap. And he said, I prayed 500 times. I prayed so many times. I prayed and I'm not answered. I'm not being answered. So the rabbi tells them, let me tell you something. You and Hashem right now are having a debate. What's the debate? You believe that life is about getting your needs fulfilled. That's what you think life is. I ask you, did Hashem need to take your holy neshama from tachat kiseh hakavod and put it down in this world so you can get a house, you could eat and you could drive a nice car? Is that what he brought you here for? You think that if you were answered for your prayers on the hundredth time, the two hundredth time, you think, ah, my prayers were good, they achieved their purpose, I got my house. He says, you are very mistaken, very mistaken. You came down into this world to connect to Hashem, to yearn, to get close to Hashem, to cry to Hashem, to talk to Hashem. Hashem did you the biggest favor. He gave you a need. 
to call out to him and you prayed 500 times? Do you know how valuable every one of those prayers were? If Hashem would give you a hundred houses, it wouldn't equal to a quarter of one of your prayers. You took on learning extra. You took on not saying Lashon Ara. What a chesed Hashem did for you. He gave you a catalyst to bring all that growth. By the way, you're not finished yet. You have a little more. When you finish what you need to do, He'll throw you the house. Okay, you'll get it at the end. The house is being used to help you. The prayer is the main thing. And we cry and we say, oh, my prayers, they're not worth anything. I didn't get what I wanted. That's not the way it works. It's backwards. There is nothing better for us than to soar in emunah. And the Pasuk says, Hashem Sadiq Yivhan. Hashem will give us Nisyonot to elevate us. Now Asa Nes Lehitno says, He gives us tests to raise us. And you have to know, every moment of your life is carefully planned and your tests are coming exactly the when they're supposed to come to give you growth, to give you greater prayers, to give you greater emunah. But Hashem's tests are not easy. They're not easy. Person, I have someone in my learning program, he's going to college and he was, he had, Rabbi, I can't come the next few days. This is a couple of weeks. I have finals now. Chemistry final. It's impossible. I'm studying. I'm this. I'm that. He's so nervous. A college professor is giving you a chemistry test. It's very hard. You don't think Hashem's tests are hard? They're hard. He's not going to expose, make it easy. But they're well worth it. There's a boy. He's about teshuva. His parents over here in America had no religion. He wanted to improve. He ended up going to yeshiva in Israel and he stayed in Israel. And he was so excited. He was ready to start a life of his own and it was time to go on shiduchim. He went on, on a date, didn't work out, but then he wasn't getting any calls. No one wanted him. It went on like this for years. And he told his rabbi, he said, Rabbi, what's wrong with me? I know, I don't have parents here. I'm alone, I'm this, I'm that. He says, I'm broken. So his rabbi tells him, you're broken? I have advice for you. Excuse me. Use your pain right now. Go to the kotel right now. Pour out your heart to Hashem. Pray with all your might. Use your feelings to talk to Hashem. Okay, Rebbe, I'm going right now. And he goes to the Kotel. He gets to the Kotel and he cries and he cries and he begs Hashem. He finishes, he looks at his watch, it's 7 p.m. He gets in the taxi, 7.05, his phone rings. Hello? It's the Shadchan. We found a new girl. We think she's good for you. She's ready to go out tonight. Could you be ready at 8? He said, I can't believe it. Five minutes after I'm finished, unbelievable. So she says, the Shadchan says to him, Do you want information about her? Do you want a picture? I don't need anything. I'm coming. I'm going. That's it. She's it. He goes home, he changes, he goes 8 o'clock, he picks her up. He calls the rabbi on the way, Rabbi, you're amazing, thank you. And I says, okay, call me after, I want to hear the good news. He calls the rabbi at 10 o'clock. He says, Rabbi, you know I told you what I'm looking for in a girl. This, 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 this. She had none of the above. Not even one thing. Zero. It was not even close. So he says, what is this, a joke? What did it, five minutes after I finish, Hashem does this to me and He gives me this girl? What's going on? 
So the rabbi tells him, the rabbi tells him, this is one of Hashem's tests. Are you going to go tomorrow and still pray to Hashem with the same fervor? Or are you going to say, that's it, I had enough, it's over. And if you're able to go back tomorrow, your prayers become 10,000 times greater. You're so lucky. Your prayers now will become infinitely greater if you could go back after that. Yeah, it was Hashem, but it was a setup. It was for your good. There was another man. He tells his rabbi, he says, Rabbi, me and my wife, my family, we live in a certain neighborhood. We live in this neighborhood. We have to commute 45 minutes a day to go to work, both of us, and our children's yeshiva is also in that area. And every day I pray, Hashem, please find me a house in that neighborhood. That neighborhood's better in my eyes in every way. It's closer, yeshiva's there, everything's there. But I say at the end of my tefillah, if it's not good for me to be there, Hashem, then I understand I need to be here. And I've been praying like that for two years. I'm happy, fine. If you want me here, Hashem, I'm here. See, he says, last week, there's a magazine or a newspaper in my house. I open it up, I start reading, and I see an advertisement. For a house, I see the picture, it looks perfect. A block away from where I work, two blocks away from my wife, right near the yeshiva, and the price, I couldn't believe it, my, my, my mouth dropped. I immediately said, finally, thank you Hashem. And I called up the broker, and the broker tells me, sorry, 30 minutes ago, someone else just got it. And I said, what? 30 minutes ago? Rabbi, I understand. I told Hashem, if He wants me here, I'll stay here. But why did He do that to me? Why did He open up that thing? What after this? And the Rabbi told him again, you're being tested in your emunah. Are you going to say, if I would have opened that article yesterday, I could have been there. I want to tell you something. That house to you is as good as being in Australia. It wasn't yours. It was never yours. It was never going to be yours. But you have a nisayon and emunah. Because if Hashem wanted you to have that house, He could have made 101 reasons why you opened up that article yesterday, the day before, two days before. It was sitting in your house. Why didn't you open it? Because you're being tested in your emunah. And if you're able to say, Hashem, I believe it's you and the house is not for me. And I know that it's just a test and I'm going to pass. Then you soar to Gadlud. You become great. We have the ability to give Hashem so much. Man could come home at night. Imagine a man comes home, he's starving, he didn't eat the whole day, he sees his wife on the couch reading a book, he says, ah, my wife, she finished everything, she even has time to sit and read, Psh, I'm so happy. He's starving, he goes over to the stove, he takes off the lid of the pot and he sees it's empty, there's nothing there. She's on the couch reading and there's no food. And you know what a husband could say at that moment? Hashem, I know you're in charge of my food. And if I was meant to eat a big meal tonight, my wife would have made it. And Hashem, I'm going to take out some crackers and tea. And I'm going to trust you that you did this for my good. You gave Hashem the greatest gift. You give your wife the greatest gift and you give yourself the greatest gift because nobody in life could affect you. Not another human being. If you're meant to get something, you're getting it. No one can take it away. It's all about 
seeing Hashem in what appears to be Teva. It appears to be my wife got lazy and she's on the couch. No! You weren't supposed to have dinner. Hashem set it up. For your Nisayon. Whenever we're late and we can't find the keys, where's those keys? Oh, why can't you find the keys when you're late? Hashem hid them from you. It's a Nisayon. Right now? Yeah. It's Me'at Hashem. It's a Nisayon. How are you going to react? Someone disturbs your sleep. Get out! What are you doing? It's a Nisayon. Everything in life is a Nisayon. We have to know our main purpose is to soar in Emunah. To see Hashem. To say, thank you, Hashem. I trust you, Hashem. This is from you, Hashem. Every t it's not all or nothing. People are going to fall. And people say, I'm such a hypocrite. I tell people, Emunah, Emunah, Emunah. And then I don't do it. You're not a hypocrite. So you fell once. Get up. Next time you'll be better. Someone was sitting in my office. And he was... He felt so bad. This guy went through the biggest nisayon you can imagine. I'm not going to give you the details now. And what is he crying about? I feel bad that I didn't have the emunah that I thought I did. I thought I would take it better. I thought I would be praising Hashem and I'm not. I said, you're amazing. Those thoughts alone, that's what you're thinking about? Your life just now turned upside down? And you're thinking about... I wish I had better emunah. You're a sadiq. People have to know it's not all or nothing. Our purpose in this world is growth, is connection to Hashem. And I want to conclude with one more point. Sometimes people feel distanced. They feel that Hashem doesn't want them. He's not listening to me. He's pushing me away. Every time I try to get close, something else happens. I try to improve in this area, and I get shut down. I try to do this, I get shut down. And you feel like you're being pushed away. And some people might say, maybe it's because I'm so bad, Hashem doesn't like me. I do a lot of sins, I do bad things. I actually went over to a man and I said, you want to come learn? He said, no. I said, why not? He said, because Hashem hates me. I said, why does Hashem hate you? Because I'm so bad. I'm so bad. Hashem hates me. So why bother? You know how much Hashem loves you? I saw in this week's parasha, we just read Vayishlach. Ashelach. We had the episode of the Miraglim. The most tragic episode, the first Tisha B'Av. And then the episode of the Mapilim, the people who tried to go into Israel despite Moshe telling him no. Another tragedy. And what comes right after that? Seemingly something out of place. The Pasuk says, when you bring a Korban, I want you to bring wine accompanying it. And when you bring a Korban, bring a flower offering to accompany it. What in the world is this doing over here? We had a whole book of Vayikra about Korbanot. Now in the middle of the Miraglim, and then Korah, and your sandwich in the middle, some laws about bringing wine and flour on the Mizbeach. What is it doing here? So one of the rabbis explained with a Masha, I forgot his name. Imagine you have a man, Ezra and Joe. Ezra and Joe. And Ezra hates Joe. He did something to him. Ezra can't stand Joe. He's his enemy. Joe doesn't mind Ezra, but Ezra can't stand Joe. And Joe is having a community function in his house, important meeting. And Ezra says, I will not step foot in his house. I'm not going. And Ezra's friend said, we need you there. You're important. It's a big meeting. You got to come. I'm not going to Joe. And, that. and they pressure him. And he, okay, I'll go. And he goes and he sits in Joe's house. Now there's a food all over, he's feeding the people. 
Joel comes around now with some extras, comes around with wine. Ezra, you want wine? No. Not taking extra from you. He comes around with some desserts. Can I give you a dessert? No. Because I don't take any extras from my enemy. I don't want to keep your extras for yourself. If you love someone, yeah, pour it on. I'll take more. Please, thank you. You know what happened? Hashem gave us the whole book of Vayikra. Korbanot, after Korbanot, Korbanot. And He made a treaty with us. He'll always accept our offerings. He'll always be with us. He'll never forsake us. The Jews just went through a time period of sin after sin after sin after sin. The Meranenim, they complained about the man. They complained about the meat. And then they ran away from Ar Sinai. And they had the Meraglim and the Mapilim. You know what the Jews are thinking? They're thinking to themselves, Hashem, He probably hates us. He's stuck with us. So He's forced to be here. So you know what Hashem tells them? Right after all this, my, 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 my child, my sweetie, next time you bring me a korban, I want some extras. Pour some wine. I want some wine from you. I want some flour from you. Please give me the extras. Because Hashem tells us, I still love you. Teshuvah is so easy. Come back. Just tell me you're sorry and come back. You're never pushed away. Never in your life think that Hashem is ever pushing you away. There's no such thing. All He wants is you to come close. You don't know how to read Hashem sometimes, but He definitely is bringing you in. I'll conclude with a story I read two days ago. Story is in one of Rabbi Spiro's books. The story is about a man named Charlie from Chicago. Charlie from Chicago was in a Baal Teshuvah synagogue or institution where they're trying to help bring people back. And he's there for years and he's not growing. He doesn't observe anything. He just comes to the lectures, but he's not changing. So one day the rabbi comes over to him, Rabbi Arya, something, and he says, Charlie, you've been here a long time. You seem very interested. I think it's time you make some type of move. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta step up. Charlie says, Rabbi, you're right. It is time. I've been thinking about it. I'm gonna accept upon myself to only eat kosher. Rabbi says, wow, that's great. Great. But Charlie says, starting tomorrow. <laughs> Today's gonna be my last day. He had this place in Chicago, it's a restaurant, an eatery, it's called Super Dog, D-A-W-G. They sell hot dogs. This Charlie loves Super Dog. He loves it to pieces. So I gotta get my last Super Dog, and that's it, then I'm in. So he goes that afternoon for lunch to the eatery, he sits down, he orders his Super Dog, he's sitting there, and he's putting on the sauerkraut and the mustard and the ketchup and whatever you name it. And he's sitting there, he's about to sink his teeth into it. And a, a man with a suit walks in, businessman, and he just sits down opposite Charlie. He's waiting for someone. He says, hi, how are you? And make conversation, he's talking to him. Charlie, he sees this guy, he's talking about his school, about this, that. He sees he's not leaving. He says, I can't take it anymore. I got to eat. So he sinks his teeth into the first bite. He sees him right. So the guy tells him, wow, I see you like that. You like that uh, super dog. He says, yeah, really, I love these things. Huh? But uh, interesting, this is going to be my last one. Your last one? Why are you stopping? He says, I'm not going to tell him about kashrut. He says, I told him, it's too expensive for me. I'm always feeding my children, my this, my that. I can't afford it anymore. This is my last super dog. I can't afford it. So the guy tells him, you're going to stop eating because you can't afford it? Let me introduce myself to you. My name is Larry. 
I own this place. Far be it from me to see a customer stop eating because he can't afford it. He pulls out of his pocket a certificate and he says, here, a lifetime supply of Superdor. <laughs> Charlie, he tells him, okay, thank you, all right. He goes back to his rabbi. He says, Rabbi, I don't understand. I take upon myself to stop eating non kosher and Hashem gives me a lifetime supply. <laughs> Obviously, he doesn't care for my avodah. He doesn't want me to eat kosher. So the rabbi tells him, Oh, you got it all wrong. You got it wrong. You thought you were only on the level of giving up super dog that you had to pay for. So you thought. Hashem knows you're on the level of giving up a free lifetime supply right now. You're holding much greater. Hashem is demanding much more from you now. You take this challenge and you run with it. And I want you to take this certificate and frame it. And I want you to remind yourself every time you look at it how much Hashem believes in you. And Charlie he followed the rabbi's advice and that commitment led to another commitment to another commitment today he is fully observant and he has on his dining room wall the certificate from the lifetime supply of Superdog because you don't know how to read Hashem you think he's pushing you away he's elevating you you have to learn more about Hashem you don't know go to people who know Go to people and ask them, what does Hashem mean? We don't always know. But one thing is for sure, Hashem wants you. He wants you close to Him. He loves you. He never pushes you away. And as great as you could become, every ounce of improvement that you have in Emunah is that much greater you become. This is the Nisayon of our generation. Living with Hashem in the Teva but seeing Him every step of the way. And the more we practice, the more we hear about it, the more we talk about it, the greater we'll become. We should have siyata dishmaya to reach the greatest levels of emunah. Amen. Amen.